Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land. My name is Jim Page, Dr. Jim Page. I'm an academic with QUT in teacher education. Most of my life, however, I've uh, been a high school teacher, both in Australia and overseas. I, I hold a PhD in peace education and worked in this field with the United Nations. I'm currently a coordinator for a research project examining social attitudes to peace and war. We're here to discuss principally higher education funding and the way the current government has been managing this and the future alternatives. I don't want to add too much to what uh, Ross has said about uh, the way universities are going, mainly because I think it's fairly self-evident to most of the people in this auditorium. Most of us would know from our own experience, uh, universities are very much operating on skeleton staffs, that research funding has been cut dramatically, and that the commercial imperative is driving universities uh, to a very detrimental factor. I don't want to say too much about the RQF either, other than the fact that the Democrats are also committed to abolishing this. Uh, we can discuss this further, but one of the hidden aspects of the RQF is the agenda that uh, institutions will be rank ordered. And it's not too difficult to see the agenda there, because if you're uh, if you're on the top rank order of um, institutions, the government can therefore fund you, but if you're uh, the majority of the uh, institutions who uh, don't score so well, uh, the government can therefore say, well, you've just got to try harder. It's part of this ideological commitment uh, towards competition. And I say an ideological commitment to competition because I don't believe that competition or individual individualism is a necessarily a bad thing. But what you see in the current government is almost an obsessive commitment to competition and individuality, whereby we, we, are, we are placed in competition at every instance against each other. We compete each other against each other for research grants. We compete against each other for um, indications of excellence. Um, and it's actually flowing into the, the ethos of the university, where it becomes a much more competitive and dog-eat-dog -dog institution, rather than a genuine co collaborative institution. Just a few more words about, um, about a commercially driven university. In conversations with colleagues, we've actually commented that Plato would never get a job in current universities. Why? Well, three reasons. Firstly, there's no actual commercial viability for what Plato writes, or no perceived commercial viability. Second reason, it actually takes quite a long time to produce a major work, such as the Republic. Third reason, very simple. In the current context, nobody would know who Plato is. Australian Democrats. The Democrats, in fact, have a 10-point plan, action plan, and I'll just go through it very quickly. Wind back the government's ideological commitment to deregulation of higher education and restore the ethic that, is, that education is an obligation of the government and a right of all Australians. Revise the indexation formula for grants to universities to account for inflation, plus apply an additional $1.5 billion over five years to redress the underfunding. Abolish full free degrees for domestic students, Repeal the BSU legislation, peg student union, student income support measures to the poverty line, lower the age of independence for students to 18 years, make all Commonwealth higher education scholarships tax free and abolish the distinction between scholarships, abolish the RQF and legislate to support autonomy. Now this is actually an NTU uh, policy to pass legislation enshrining the academic independence. There's also um, included in that, there's a very simple thing the government can do, and that's part of democratic policy to pass legislation, although that's not specifically mentioned, 
and that is to pass legislation enshrining the United Nations recommendation concerning the status of higher education teaching personnel into legislation. Um, this sounds like self-promotion here, but I have an article published on the web on this, but um, it's, I find it amazing that Australia uh, boasts about its international compliance and what we're a good international citizen. But this international standard is routinely breached by Australian universities. Why? Because partly due to the fact of the economic imperative, we're competing against each other. So the rights people go out the window. I think I've got about uh, two minutes left. Uh, why the Australian Democrats? Uh, Richard Farmer, political journalist, journalist Richard Farmer, writes that in his crikey guide to the federal election, he writes, of all the minor parties, it seems that none other is placed to fulfil the Democrats' role as a genuine centrist party. A genuine centrist party does not mean that you're wishy-washy. It means that when you look at issues, you look at them on your merit, on the, on the merit of those issues. It's a very difficult thing to do when you have an extreme, in the current context, where you have a, a government which is doing so many things which, which, are, which are very deleterious to the university sector. But I think that's an important, um, it's an important ideal. That's why I'm committed to the Australian Democrats. Thank you.